And welcome back to The Colonel Does 80 Days. We are on day 12. On our way from Saritsyn to Astrakhan on the border of the Caspian Sea. Uh, it was a short distance, but the train managed to make a great deal of work out of it, huffing its way along the banks of the Volga. Let's converse. Greetings, Monsieur Rivanov. I am the quartermaster here. You are most strange luggage. So I guess this is a freight train. Awesome. Uh, Astrakhan to Ekaterinburg. You mentioned trains. I've been told Beijing can be reached from Hong Kong aboard the Beijing Express. But the fare is extortionate. Um... Speaking of trains, I understand my brother always wanted to travel aboard the Canadian Pacific Railway from Gastown to Regina. <clears throat> I have not taken that railway, but I've been to Gastown and I've been to Ch Regina. So, <laughs> uh, nice to see the Canadians represented here. Uh, Vladivostok to Pyongyang. I don't know. Ooh, Vladivostok to Honolulu? Maybe, but you can pick up harmonicas in Honolulu. Extremely valuable in the world. I bet they are. Vladivostok to San Francisco. No idea, but I do know you can buy revolvers in San Francisco. Extremely valuable in New Orleans. Okay. <clears throat> so Hong Kong to... Okay, Gastown to Calgary, to Regina, to Winnipeg. Freight train to Ast... Oh, it is freight train. I was getting itchy feet from our sluggish speed. I found a train guard to ask about our destiny. I asked the bartender about journeys from Astrakhan. I stayed with Monsieur Fogg for the morning. Let's ask about journeys. And he shrugged. The hydrofoil to Tehran is good fun, though it's a crossing that's so rough you'd better be prepared. We arrived in the mid-afternoon and went to explore this new town. Oh, man. <clears throat> So let's take a look at this first. So there's Merv, right? And we could technically, I guess, why is Monday? We could go from Baku to Krasna, Krasnovodsk to Merv, and then come down to Kabul, to Hong Kong, and go from Hong Kong to Honolulu, to San Francisco. Um, but that kind of lengthens the trip though, right? I mean, it kind of defeats the purpose of what we're trying to do here. We're trying to go from Vladivostok. Erga. Irkutsk. I mean, I think the way that we need to go is to Vladivostok in 15 days, and then cross from Vladivostok into... Not Honolulu, but... Gastown, I think. I think that's the way to do it. Because the Canadian Pacific Railway goes all the way across the country, at least into... At least to Montreal, or possibly Quebec City. I'm not sure if it extends all the way out here to the west coast, or the east coast. And then it's just a matter of coming back to London. Alright. <clears throat> so I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to just continue on to Ekaterinburg. Departs tomorrow. Um, Alright, so let's go back here. Market opens at 7 a.m. When does that leave tomorrow? 10 a.m. Alright, so we got to be quick. Gotta be quick. Alright, so let's pass the night away. City of Astrakhan sits on the tiptoe of the Russian bear, where the Vol Volga River empties into the Caspian Sea. Uh, I found the people to be most friendly, and I asked their advice on how to continue on from the city. A passing nervous British seamstress suggested the boat to Tehran, and went on to remark that the devout sisters of Didacus are best avoided in Madras. 
Uh, and what should I do with my time in Astrakhan? I asked. The response was immediate. You must bathe in the river mud. My new friend showed me to a small hut by the river where vats of fresh mud were available for soaking in. The idea... Uh, I could not resist the opportunity to lower myself into a vat of mud. I undressed beside a wicker screen and clambered in. The effect, dear friends, was most refreshing. I relished my solitary respite. I decided to try persuading my master to indulge. Um... I'm, I'm wondering if he's going to think it's a waste of time. <clears throat> and threw my clothes back in the mud-splattered haste. Mud? I do not think that will be necessary. Thank you, Passepartout, he declared firmly. Alas, there was no moving him. Deteriorated, the character is now zestful. Yeah, I had a feeling he might kind of poo-poo that. Uh, plus four hours. We don't have time to explore. Uh, market at 7 a.m. All right, let's wait for the market to open. It's just about to open. Ding, 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 ding. Okay, fur-lined boots. Arctic fox. I don't know if we need the fur-lined boots, though. Southern Hemisphere. We're not going to the Southern Hemisphere. Uh, frequent flyer set. Let's grab the neck... No, yeah, let's grab the neck cushion. Uh, the gel plate, we're not going to Merv, so let's sell that. Uh, we're not going to the Ottoman Empire. Let's sell that. <clears throat> let's see, what else we got here? Fur coat. Antalya, we're not going to go there. Alright, let's, uh, oh, it's already past 10 o'clock. Crap! Time goes fast, man! Um, yeah, let's do that. Neck cushion. I wonder if we can sell suitcases. Parts tomorrow at 10 a.m. Alright. So we'll have to wait for tomorrow. Uh, opens Monday. Well, might, might as well explore since we have time. I walked the streets a while, discovering the possibilities for how we might make progress. It really doesn't help us. Alright, passing the night away. Before retiring, I polished our shoes and hat brims. I spent a few hours while you know what, let's uh let's help help out our relationship here. Polished our shoes and hat brims to better ready us for our upcoming adventure or departure. Embark. Have another freight car. We're good. We're prepared. Okay, so now we're going to... While the rest of the world puts increasing faith in airships, the Russians seem determined to use railways. Perhaps they know something about air safety we would not. I suppose it is more efficient for mass movements. And Russia is a country massive in every way, not least in strength of its army. But of all the railways in the country, the one from Astrakhan to Ekaterinburg must be one of, among the most impressive, tunneling through several hundred miles of mountains to reach its goal. It is an unflagging beast of a railway line, rattling tirelessly on through dark places. Although looking out the window for an hour or more, I began to fancy I could see eyes and creatures moving in the dark. Perhaps the Russians were moving underground. Or perhaps I was growing tired and fanciful. <clears throat> Converse. I am at your service, Monsieur Fogg. Passport 2, there you are. Um. Ekaterinburg. Regrettably, nothing. Money? How are funds? We are quite uh, comfortable, I must say. You have been most cautious so far. Thank you. Omsk. Do you know traders in Agra will pay far more than they should for hammers from Omsk? Where's Agra? I don't know where Agra is. Rock walls thundered past on either side. There seemed to be no end to the darkness. How fast do you suppose we're traveling? We are heading north. 
I observed. My master nodded. The Trans-Siberian Express runs all the way to Vladivostok, he answered. It is rumored to be very efficient indeed. That was our conversation. Just as bleak and desolate as the tunnel through which we ran. <laughs> Alright, so our relations have strengthened. That's good, because they were damaged a bit. Wait. Paris World Fair, a roaring success. Okay, that's, uh, that's helpful. The train erupted into sunlight sometime in the morning and joined, I think, the route of the Trans-Siberian Express for the final hours of its run into the town of Ekaterinburg. I spent what little time remained playing cards with the train guard. From whom I won the hefty sum of 400 pounds, enough that I felt uh, disinclined to stop when our station arrived. Felt rather guilty about it and would have given him some back... If, it had, if he had allowed me to, though his pride prevented it. Your funds have gone up significantly. Well, I don't know if 400 pounds is significant. But the railway cap could be sold handsomely here. I don't know if we really want to do that, though. Let's go to the market. Check it out. Uh, for Do we want these? I don't know if we really do. Cold climate set. Maybe we do. I don't know. It's possible. Top hat. Solve. We really want to keep that stuff. The net cushion. Railway cap. I don't see a need to sell any of this stuff. We're not going to get a lot for it. Alright. Let's, uh, we're done. Torga, blah, 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 square. <clears throat> Um, plan. What's the plan here? 2,800 pounds. Arrives next Sunday. Departs in two days. Okay, so we can probably move that up. Bank opens at 9 a.m. So let's wait for 9 a.m. to roll by. <clears throat> ding, ding, ding. What? Oh, it's 9 p.m. <laughs> Ekaterinburg was a grand city of the north, a hive of industrial activity. Freight trains and wagons rolled in and out at all hours, carrying all manner of steam this and electro loop that had electro loop that heading east and west along Russia's great back. However, for our purposes, there was only one train. Given the city size, I cannot believe the Trans-Siberian was the only connection. So I determined to find something else to offer my master as an alternative. Um, I began my search in an open area, and maybe this is a balloon, which I reasoned might be an airfield, and it was, but a military one. Can you give me one good reason why I should allow you to fly with us? What an impertinent line of questioning. We're going around the world. Perhaps I can convince you. I replied, opening my wallet. They were not sympathetic. I was marched out of the field at gunpoint. Uh, next, I tried a local coffee house, thinking I would find travelers there. The locals treated me like a curious thing found on the bottom of a shoe, and I learned essentially nothing. By now, it was growing late, so I returned to Monsieur Fogg. My master had passed the hours sipping a single cup of tea, which it was clear from the look on his face he had not enjoyed. All right. Um... Let's explore. I struck up a few conversations here and there, hunting for options on how we might proceed. Let's go to the bank. My master left his feet. Perhaps this bank will... Blah, 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 blah. I regarded the bank as we entered. It was a small affair, but efficiently looked after, and we were quickly seen to. Would you like to take out funds, we were told. It may take a few days. Um... Can't really waste any time though. What is what does tomorrow mean? I guess is what I want to know. We need twenty eight hundred to travel. Um, let's take two days, right? We require one thousand five hundred pounds. I said. The manager nodded. 
I will have to communicate with London first, of course, he apologized. I should have to re a reply in two working days. It seems, Monsieur Fogg remarked as we left, we have some time to dispose of. Alright, so when does this train leave? It leaves tomorrow, so we got two days. Two days. Alright, so let's go back here. Let's wait. The room we took a room and settled in, and I buffed and shone in Master's Pocket Watch. I ran a few errands for the hotelier. Spent a few hours walking around. S maybe we can find another option. Nothing of interest. Oh, great. Does this do anything? Oh, hotel. Pass the night. With the last light of the evening, I polished our shoes and hat brims. I helped the kitchen staff to clean, earning 63 pounds in fees and tips. Kind of thinking I sh Tapping the clock will skip time forward. Yep. 9 a.m. Funds are ready. We returned to the bank at opening time to collect our funds, and then we were ready to proceed once more. Alright, so let's go plan. Vladivostok. Two days, let's negotiate. Fur coat should help spur them on. Grease the wheels, 240 pounds. Acquire a further 2,800. Oh, okay, I got it. So it'll, it'll cost us 2800 Okay, I got it. I, th I think I got it. Alright, so let's uh, go to the hotel. As night fell, I did some minor alterations to our clothing. Your character is now bright. Awesome. I had no idea you're so exceptionally talented, my man. I uh, got skills. Embark. Hire extra space. Hire extra space. So we're going to take a hit. But that's okay. Join the Trans-Siberian Express in the Urals. That money has to last us all the way around the world. Converse. Degusten. Let us share a glass of wine together, monsieur. A lot of us, Doug. I hear the commercial port has been relocated. It is now a military town. Um, I want to get to Hong... No, I don't... Do we have to go to China or to Hong Kong? We can't just go to Alaska or something? You mentioned boats. I've been told one can sail aboard the trading vessel from Miami to Havana. Well, that, that helps. Not really. It doesn't really help us at all. <laughs> I lied. Uh, Pyongyang to Yokohama. Canton. Uh, Pangsau Pass? Where is that? Uh, Pyongyang to... Please, so you can get to Yokohama from Pyongyang, but Korean trader, but the fare is well beyond most travelers. New roads discovered. Havana to Miami. Hmm. I settled Monsieur Fogg and went to explore the train. Ending up in a car filled with lively cavalry officers, eating smoked fish and playing music. One of them enjoyed me enjoined me to play as Balalaika. <laughs> a kind of triangular mandolin. Uh, I accepted eagerly and strummed a few notes to familiarize myself with the unaccustomed instrument. Once happy with its function, I played a, a familiar favorite. I played a familiar Yip I Adi, a song about a musical fellow called Herman Von Bello who was possessed of a rather sizable cello. 
<laughs> wonder if that's a euphemism. Our choruses of yips and A-I's rather alarmed some of our fellow diners, and I was treated to some colorful local lyrical variations, which cast a new light on Herr von Bellow's prodigious talents. The officers were so pleased by my performance that they very generously made me a gift of that very same balalaika. I cannot wait to play it for Monsieur Fogg. The balalaika should fetch a good price in San Francisco if we don't find a use for it. I could I not wish for a superior valet. Time on board trains takes on a meditative quality. I visited the library car. And met Golan, the daughter of a Mongol chieftain who was poring over a thick volume of algebra. I confessed myself surprised by her choice of reading, but she shrugged. I must study algebra if I am to be an engineer in the Imperial Army of Russia. I wish to leave behind my ancestors' warrior past. It is a new world, I observed. We may remake ourselves as we like. She laughed, delighted. Just so. She folded the book closed. You have traveled, monsieur. They call us barbarians, don't they? She asked. I felt sorry for her and wanted to soften the truth. Who are they and what do they matter? They do. Might as well be honest. But they would not if they saw you studying. She leaned forward, eyes shining. The truth is, there is more going on in my country than most outsiders know. We are growing fast as a people. What do you mean? I asked, intrigued. This is the age of progress, she replied, tapping her books, of systems and of thermodynamics. And my people, we have discovered some very interesting things. I was intrigued and leant forward to hear more, but the girl shook her head. I won't tell you, she laughed. I will show you tomorrow night on the deck. I will be there, I nodded. We conversed until supper, and she presented me with her family sold a Mongolian horsetail banner. I do not have any need of my past where I am going. You have it. Do with it what you will. Now has Dab handed. Is now Dab... I don't know what that means. The Mongol sold should fetch a good price in Yokohama should we decide to sell it. Omsk today, we decanted a full score of British, Dutch, and German merchants. Decanted ourselves onto the platform. Um, yeah, let's do the merchants. And took on more military officers who cleared an entire first-class carriage for the use of a mysterious couple. I caught a brief glimpse of them, of the man, before the carriage door slammed. He had pale brown skin and the eyes of a scholar, but was dressed the fashion of the Ottoman court rather than the us, the Russian Imperium. I was fairly overset with curiosity, but it would be several days before I encountered the couple again. The hour grew late, and my meeting with Golan the mathematician approached. Mr. Fogg watched my bustling about our cabin with suspicion. You look as though you are a man planning an escape, he remarked. Maybe. Guess we'll find out in the next episode. Hopefully you enjoyed. Uh, if you have any comments or suggestions on the series itself, not specifically on the game, please feel free to leave them below. And until next episode, please do take care.